Okay, my name is Dara Perez, Good Voice Elk. Um, so this is Wind River Grow Our Own, and so we have our weekly Zoom meetings. Come on, Doc. I have our weekly Zoom meetings, and uh, this week we have some special guests. We have Hank Herrera and Livy, Livy Lewis, who are going to talk about the Wind River Farmers Market and about some opportunities that people can have, and they'll talk further on that. Um, so that's for the Fremont County area. And then we also have, let's see if she's on. We have, hold on, let me reach out to Anna. I don't see her on. So give me a quick second. She's our guest speaker. She's gonna talk about worm. One second, I'll be right back. All right, and so Danica, do you want to go ahead and talk about some updates that you have? Sure, good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. So we have a few updates, um, and Dara, interrupt me if I'm forgetting anything. Uh, but one of the ones that we were interested in and we're uh, going to announce is the junior or the teenager gardeners pro project that we're trying to get for kids to get involved. Um, we already have two little team leaders, Nayel and Sean, that will uh, try to recruit some of their friends. And if anyone has any children, um, teenage uh, age, uh, please refer them. And if you have any ideas on how to uh, take it further or, you know, ideas for them that they can get into, uh, please contact me or Dara. It's something that we just thought of maybe about two weeks ago, but we want to introduce it now. Um, one of the projects that we wanted to start with them is scarecrows. So we've decided that we're going to reach out to people that may donate old clothes or consignment shops you can refer to so we can go pick them up. Uh, we're going to purchase some hay and get them started on that project so that way they can de deliver them. The kids will make will make the scarecrows. It's like a craft project, and then we'll deliver them to the family homes that, uh, that are requesting them. It'll be something fun, and then maybe have like some kind of uh, project for them too, where they grow their own little plants. Uh, just something to get them interested in, and to keep them busy this summer. Uh, we do want to use the kids to. Um, maybe paint some of the planters that we're using. We've been reclaiming old tires and painting them. Uh, that was successful last week. Dara and Cass, they went out and used the uh, volunteers that Chessie provided and they look really good. The tires that they did, they're gonna be plant, plant flowers and whatnot in there. Um, but if anyone has any ideas, suggestions of anything else that we might be able to to use with them or even refer some children that are that might be interested uh sean and niall they're both 15 so maybe like around that age or over the age of 12. um and they can pick a name for themselves <laughs> it's just something that they can come up with on their own i thought that would be fun and cute and then we want to eventually get them t-shirts uh so that they could, you know, be, in, be fun for them. Uh, we're excited and I'm very thankful that um, the Wind River uh, Farmers Market's here in case uh, some of us that had planted, I, like myself, I have, I think I got carried away, um, but I think I have like 20 to 30 tomato plants 
I just got so excited and oh my god now they're taking over my porch I did tell Cass that I'd bring some out to her so she can uh, plant them at the community garden in Fort Washakie and so so if you've done something like I've done maybe Frank and uh Livy can uh I don't know you know kind of help you out there because they <laughs> They, they offered that service and they can go and mourn about it. But yeah, I, I did kind of get carried away with tomatoes um, and peppers. Uh, my, my son and Kevin, they've been watering them and taking care of them for me because I do work for full time. I think I'm missing something, Dara, about an update, if you could chime in at any moment. So a few more things um, we were discussing uh, like the last day, like we have, a, we put on the Facebook page about people needing the boxes. And so we have some people who responded, we're going to fill those orders and we're thinking of closing it around the 19th also for the tealing on the 19th. So we have some people and uh, I think about three more people that need tealing. And so we're going to get those done and um, we're gonna get the boxes done and so the plans for for next year because our motto is learn as we go learn as we grow we're learning to be more prepared and so we're gonna start in the in the winter time making the boxes getting them prepared so we have 50 boxes prepared for for next growing season so that's some things that we did um, we got some more choke cherries we were able to go out and get some more choke cherry branches and we uh, we got them bundled up and put them in buckets of water so we're just waiting for those two roots um, and so, yeah, so other ideas we've been thinking about is, you know, getting some other trees. Um, those were some things. And so there's um, different ideas on the on the table right now that we're kind of work for. Um, so, and then we're gonna go and purchase a big old bell of, uh, or a, a, a big old bell of the fencing. And we're gonna, you know, go out there and measure people's property and be able to put some fencing around gardens. Cause I know some people were talking about the rabbits, you know, the rabbits were, um, we're taking out their their squash. Um, so that, and then the scarecrow project, yeah. So, uh, you know, we noticed the birds, the birds are starting to, you know, really pick and eat the squash. They really love the squash as well. Something about that squash. Um, so yeah, so, you know, we got those things going on and then we have uh, 10 more boxes that we're making right now. Uh, we purchased the lumber for the, um, the mission, the mission, St. Michael's mission over in Ethity. So we're going to put 10 more planter boxes there. Um, let's see. And then the Fort Washkie one, Cass was updating and she can talk further about that, but that looks really good. Everything's going good there. Um, and then we made, we, we, we have, I, I see we have other people making boxes in the community and so I kind of had to step up my game. You know, I was like, you know, I was making the ones where the boards were going up and you know, those are the ones that are at Fort Washkie, and those were like the first prototype, I keep saying. So we have other people making them, and I see they're doing excellent. Like, you see people coming out with different styles. This guy has one with shelves. His name is Raymond Seahair, and that's kind of cute. And so yesterday, I was like, well, I got to step up my game. And so we were making some boxes, and they came out really nice. And so, you know, that's, it's fun. You know, I think that's a fun little art project as well. Got people in the community doing that. And you know, and so those things are going on and, uh, you know, just getting really sunburnt, you know, uh, was able to put on some, some hemp seed oil on my, on my skin as well as some aloe vera and it really was soothing. So, you know, other than that, you know, my, my husband, Byron, who's my, my partner, who's been helping me, um, he's about ready to go on fires. The fire season's about to start. So, so yeah, that's why we're, we're cutting it off on the 19th. Um, yeah, but other than that, um, we'll just go ahead and go around. Uh, for those who haven't been here before, what we do is kind of like the introduction, reintroduction. We tell a little bit about where we are in our planting phases, if we have any problems, um, if we mention um, any ideas, suggestions, how we can help people in the community, um, additional funding, anything. You know, all those things are on the table. It's open for open topic discussion. And we'll just go ahead and go around. And we do have Anna Schmetz on with us. And she's going to talk to us about worms. And usually that way we've been doing that is wait for the guest speaker to speak last. And so we'll go around. And so when it gets to Hank, when it gets to Lizzie, go ahead and share what you want to share about the farmer's market. 
So we'll go ahead and start and I'll go ahead and pick a person underneath me. I see Sean. Um, I'm excited for like the youth group and stuff to start. I feel like that's going to be cool seeing, you know, I feel like it's a skill everyone should know. It's how to garden and live off the land on themselves. But, I'm excited for that, and like I think, and then like at first, honestly, I kind of thought it was boring, just seeing like putting the seeds in the dirt and stuff. But like as soon as you see them sprout and stuff, I don't know, it's like a sudden thing of excitement. Like you did that, an accomplishment, and so I like that feeling. And then it it, it looks good, and then, you know I just can't wait to like one of them to grow fruit or vegetables and stuff, and to eat it and say you know what tastes better than store bought. And then, so I'm excited for that. And I'm like anxious about the nervous group, like the youth group. I don't know what, I don't know how it's going to go. I've never done anything like that, but it's a new experience and stuff for me to learn. And so I'm excited. And I'll just pass it on to Nancy. Uh, Sean, there's two Nancys, Nancy Lick and Nancy Montana. Which Nancy do you see under you? Oh, Nancy Lick. Nancy, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, my last name, by the way, is a result of Ellis Island when my grandfather got off the boat. Um, that's not what it was in German. Um, I'm going to defer to the other Nancy. Um, um, to report out on some of our stuff, okay? Um, but I have a question um, on the statement about clothing, oh, cl the used clothing. Is that something that the young people's group needs? Yes, ma'am. It's one of their craft projects. Uh, for this, the first one we're starting is the scarecrows. Okay, so um, if we sent you a couple boxes of clo uh, clothing, that would, you know, you can email me with the kinds of things that you want. Okay. You can thank you so much. Wonderful. Can thank you. Okay, and uh, other than that, I can just say that. Um, the folks here in Laramie are very excited about working with you. And we'll let Nancy fill in the details. By the way, I'm part of a eight person committee and there's three Nancys on it. And if that's a little bit of confusion, okay. Um, I'm gonna turn this over to Darlene. I think that she's next. And you're on mute, mute Darlene. Okay, I'm unmuted. <clears throat> so today I am at my apartment building where you were mentioning something about boxes. So here are some boxes that I made from fencing material that one of the residents here um, donated. Uh, actually, he, he retrieved them from some demolition project or whatever. And here are the volunteer squashes that came up in my um, compost. And a neighbor works for a nonprofit called Growing Gardens and she donated most of these like let lettuce and kale starts. Um, the rosemary, the, the um, nasturtiums, edible flowers. So this is the spot where my apartment manager said we could, I could have my own garden. Right. Um, because as you see, we're right on a busy street. Um, I wanted to have a fence around the garden. So my um, neighbor, Roger, 
said that I could use his yard. So I'm just giving you a visual so that you can see um, a, a further uh, development of what I was talking about as far as guerrilla gardening. These boxes are portable and I'm kind of, even though it's uh, in a yard that's, um, there's a lock on the gate, the idea is that, um, you know, people come by and they comment and they say, that looks great. Um, two days ago, uh, somebody who lives around the corner in another apartment building was admiring it and he said, I don't, I live in a basement apartment and all I can do is plant like cactus on my windowsill. <laughs> so I invited him to uh, take over a box and if he wanted to grow whatever he wanted to grow, he could grow it. So that's like an expansion of this community gardening idea. So I don't know who to pass it to, whoever wants to go up next, go, go for it. How about Chessie? Do you want to go next, Chessie? Sure. Um, so, well, uh, first I want to thank uh, Dara because uh, she did a little video. It's about seven minutes long um, about what all she's been doing and, and Grow Our Own's been doing. And so I'm going to be showing that. Mm -hmm. um, Dara's going to join in on that meeting. Um, this coming Friday with the uh, United Methodist Women um, from a four state area. It's called the Mountain Sky Conference and we're having a virtual breakfast. <laughs> and uh, so that video is on the menu and uh, it's uh, the theme is uh, epiphanies. And so I thought uh, this was a, and I was in charge of helping to develop the program and I thought this was a good example of an epiphany during the, the COVID-19 um, that uh, people growing our uh, own gardens and, and um, getting that kind of support that Dara and uh, others have organized. So really want to thank you for that. Um, yeah, my garden is, uh, my corn's still growing uh, <laughs> and my beans and my tomatoes and everything's looking really good. I've, having to water uh, pretty often because it's just so dry. Um, at least in Riverton, we haven't gotten much rain at all um, this spring. So uh, things are really dry. I'm kind of worried about some of my shrubs and trees, making sure I get those watered enough. So, um, so with that, I'll pass it on. And I, I too have trouble seeing who's next. So. Um, Elijah. Hey, good morning. Um, <clears throat> so far, I want to say that everything that's going on with this, the community garden and everything, I think is a pretty cool concept. I've seen growth from my sisters from my nieces, my nephews. In turn, I've seen growth within myself within the times I was able to help. And to be honest, I think that, like I've been saying these past couple of weeks, that is a cool thing because it should be about growth. Not with just only within ourselves, but within the community. Uh, I'm excited to see where this thing goes because of how everyone's been. I mean, even Dara, I've seen her running around a whole lot also. Personally, her and her husband, they've been doing a lot of work and uh, I think that's pretty cool. Um, I am busy a lot though, so the amount of help that I do put in is minuscule, but I do, I will say, just watching everyone doing what they're doing, it's like way awesome. I'll pass it on to whoever's next. I do not know how to work Zoom that well. It may be a millennial, but I'm still a little slow. How about Derek? All right, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Derek, so I'm back in New York, which is 
nice, but I miss, I miss Wyoming and I miss all of you. Um, so I'm upstate right now. And so for the past few months, my sister and her boyfriend have been uh, raising like seedlings and stuff. And they actually grew them like from the seed. And they, they've, I'll show you them in a second. They're, they're pretty great. And then yesterday, my mom and I, who's working right now, um, we're making like beds and there's like a river in the backyard. And so we've been wheeling over rocks and stuff and then making beds out of that. All right, let's see if the Wi-Fi works around here. Um, so these are the beds that her, uh, her boyfriend made, I think pretty recently. So they have like collard greens and peppers, uh, tomatoes, oregano, and a lot, a lot of beans, a bed full of beans. Um, and then this, this is the bed that my mom and I made yesterday. So we tried, we tried to do a three sisters garden. So we will, we'll see how that works. So we have corn, beans, and squash. Um, and there's the, the corn is in the middle and then the beans are around that. And then the squash is all around. And then we had some extra room. So we put some cilantro and basil over there. Um, these are, these are some blueberry bushes. So this one is looking pretty good. And the, these two are not looking so hot, but we'll keep our fingers crossed during the warm weather. Um, and then we have one more. So me and my mom made this one today. Um, and then I think after this call and after lunch we're gonna make we're gonna we're gonna put beans and squash in them because we have so many because my sister uh planted a lot which are great um and i think i think that's it i'm really i'm really excited to hear more about what everyone else is doing um and i'll pass it on to i think nancy montana is after me you're on mute nancy Hi, uh, I think um, I'm one of the three Nancys that Nancy Lick, Nancy L spoke about. My name is Nancy Wydell and I'm with um, United Presbyterian Church in Laramie and uh, on the mission committee, which Nancy uh, L is chair of. And this is so great, this project. I, this all happened really fast, but our mission committee decided um, really quick for any committee to fund, um, direct $4,000 to this project, which uh, Dara and Danica have already received. And this project is just, I cannot believe the vision that Dara and Danica have for this project. It is absolutely amazing. And we, um, the mission committee is really excited to race up there and see these gardens. And, um, and another thing, Nancy Lick, that I didn't mention to you that was, and now Dara and Danica tell me they're gonna do a winterization project too. So. The spinoff from this is incredible. We are really excited to be a part of this. And this is the first time I've been on. It's just great to hear everybody. And see, Danica and Dara. <laughs> um, I will pass it on to Libby. Hi everyone, I'm Livy and um, Danica and Dara, thank you so much for uh, letting me join today. Uh, it's been really exciting to hear about Grow Our Own and you guys have been doing amazing work and you've been doing it amazingly quickly. Uh, I'm very impressed by that. So um, I'll start with my garden. Um, my garden is uh, I started a little bit late, so everything's just sprouting up right now. So I'm in the phase where I walk outside about 10 times a day to see if there's a new little bean sprout coming out of the ground. Um, so it's really exciting. And uh, yeah, Sean, I agree with you. It's, uh, it's just, it's so fun and so satisfying to see those little sprouts come up and just, uh, yeah, 
wait, wait and see what it turns into. So uh, I work for the Wind River Farmers Market with Hank and um, I'll let Hank add to it, but just to start, uh, last year the market happened every Thursday evening and it rotated between Fort Washakie um, at Frank Wise and then Blue Sky Hall in Ethity and then Great Plains in Arapaho. And um, we had a really good turnout last year and uh, this year, you know, things are a little bit slower with the stay at home order. So we are submitting a, a safety plan to the business councils this week to see if they can approve it and uh, let things open back up in mid-July for the market. Uh, we're hoping that they'll okay everything because it provides food and lets vendors sell and lets people access the good locally grown healthy food that you're all that you're all growing. So um, the, the farmers market, if, if anyone is interested, it's, it's open to anyone and we'd love to have any of you. It, uh, it's usually $5 if you want to grow, or I mean, if you want to grow, you want to grow. If you want to be a vendor one time, it's $5 to set up a table or it's $20 for the whole season. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're not producing enough to want your own table, we hope that we can start working with people who just want to sell, you know, Danica, if you have an extra little box of tomatoes, we're trying to figure out a way where we can help, uh, you know, have that dropped off or pick it up and then help people sell if they don't have time to show up every week at the market or if they, you know, they know they won't be making a ton, um, or have a ton to sell, we hope that we can can help with that. So um, I might type Hank and my email addresses and then Rhonda Bowers, who's the market manager. I'll put our uh, email addresses into the chat box here and uh, we'd love to hear from anyone. And we'd also love to hear any suggestions that people have. We're always trying to get the word out and um, We'd love, we'd love help with that too, just spreading the word that the market's happening and um, make sure we can get as many, as many folks over there to sell and to find healthy food. So I will stop there. And actually, Hank, you are right below me on the screen. So I'll let you go and, uh, and add to that. Thank you very much. Dara, did you want to say something? Well, somebody? Anyway. Okay. Uh, You're on mute. You're on mute. We want to work on the collaborations with you guys. So if there's any other way that we can help the farmer's market, um, because we want to, you know, build those healthy relationships. And so if there's anything else, and um, yeah, so go ahead and just share with us any, any other information to add to Libby's and then we'll just continue on with this um, and so we can get to our guest speaker, Anna. All right, um, well, my name is Hank Herrera. Um, I live in Fort Washakie, just outside of the little town. Um, and um, I manage a project that is the Wind River Food Sovereignty Project, which um, we started a couple of years ago now. And one part of the Food Sovereignty Project is our Wind River Farmers Market, which actually began maybe eight years ago um, through you, uh, University of Wyoming Extension and, um, and Blue Mountain Associates. Um, I think some of you know Blue Mountain Associates is uh, another nonprofit organization here on the reservation started by Dr. Virginia Sutter. And uh, Blue Mountain Associates had uh, a subcontract or uh, a grant from 
uh, the University of Wyoming to develop home gardens and on the reservation. So that went on for about five years and was succeeded by another research project called Growing Resilience, which some of you may know about, which so far has installed about 100, and 100 home gardens over the last five years uh, as part of a research project where the researchers from the University of Wyoming are looking at the health benefits for home gardeners. So what you're all doing is built on a strong foundation and we applaud you for taking that initiative to continue this kind of work on the reservation. As some of you know, if I'm talking too long, just tell me to stop, but as some of you know, the reservation lacks access to healthy, affordable food that's produced by the people of the reservation. And so every effort that everyone makes to produce that food, not only fruits and vegetables, which the home gardens do, but also various kinds of healthy meat, grass-fed cattle, etc. cetera, um, all of those food products go into a healthy diet. And as long as we're linked in or attached to the system of food provision that comes from the global food system and provides lots and lots of unhealthy food, um, our people remain unhealthy because that's not our natural diet as native people. So what we, what we wanna do and we encourage everyone to do is to contribute to the production of healthy, affordable food produced on the reservation. We, um, as Libby said, we have our markets. Well, this year will be different because of the COVID um, pandemic, but we hope to have our markets and at least Fort Washakie and Ethity, we're talking about Arapaho uh, because we don't have that many customers or vendors in Arapaho or haven't had. But everyone who produces, I mean, one of the beautiful things about a home garden is that home gardeners quickly learn that a few plants produce way more food that they can use, than they can use uh, in a season. And so, what we would like to do is find a way for the home gardener to sell that food, if that's what they choose to do, or distribute it in our farmers markets. Um, and uh, the farmer or the grower can have their own table and become a vendor, or we can arrange, as Libby said, to work with the grower so that we we sell the product for them at the market. We have our own tables. So um, so as I hinted, I guess, we see healthy fruits and vegetables. As Sean said, they taste a whole lot better homegrown than they do from the grocery store, whether it's a tomato or any other kind of vegetable. But we see that the task or the challenge of making sure that as many people on the reservation have healthy food is, is a very large challenge because people eat a lot of tomatoes and they eat them all year round, not just during the summertime when the fresh tomatoes are available. So our project involves doing some other things, which I'd like to introduce you to and invite anyone who's interested to join with us, um, we want to create, and we have, we have funding to create a producers cooperative, which is a, a cooperative is a form of business where the people who do the work own the business, so they're they're worker owners, and that we want that producers cooperative to guide the coordination and 
collaboration of growers so that we have a steady year round supply of food um, to uh, something else we're working on, which is to develop a commercial kitchen on the reservation where it's licensed and growers can take their excess tomatoes, for example, and process them into tomato sauce or salsas or other products that they can have available all year round. Um, we also, uh, and we also have our markets, as I said, well, Libby and I have said, and um, we want to develop a way to market and sell native produced foods, reservation produced foods to the institutions on the reservation, like the schools, so that the school children have healthy food available to them and not from Cisco or from the big global vendors. And so that uh, casino restaurants have that healthy food available and uh, healthcare facilities have that healthy food available like uh, Morningstar Manor. So it's a pretty large undertaking. We are very, very lucky to have funding from the US Department of Agriculture support our work for the, well, now another year and a half. But um, we coordinate all this work through not, not, not Libby and me per se. We're, we're sort of like the worker bees, but um, we have uh, a food, a Wind River Food Sovereignty Project Coordinating Council. And anybody who would like from the reservation to join that council send us an email and if you're not on our list, we'll make sure you're on our list and we want certainly Dara and Danica and others from the group here who want to be part of that to join with us. And we call it a coordinating council because a lot of energy goes into what you're doing, for example. I can't imagine how much Dara and her husband and Danica how much time and hours and energy they spend putting all this together. Uh, I know it's massive because I've helped to manage the Growing Resilience Project for the last almost three years now. Um, and a lot of people are doing di different things to try to make things better on the res. And we want those energies to have a focus point and a coordination so that we can amplify the benefit of what we're all doing for the benefit of the people on the reservation. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. I uh, hope you'll join us on the coordinating council and uh, Olivia and I would be happy to, uh, to answer any questions. So thank you for having us. It's an honor to be asked to be part of this group. Thank you. Thank you, Hank. Do you want to pick somebody to talk next? Somebody who hasn't spoken? Um, okay, I don't know everybody, but let's see. How about, um, is it Niel Larson? Lawson? Yeah, it's me. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Niel, and um, uh, I thought the William own is it youngs or youth sounds pretty fun because I'm a very crafty person. I love painting and making stuff, and I thought at uh, I can, you know, pay on more stuff instead of painting on my, almost my bed. Um, that would be fun. Uh, and then our plants, my mom and um, my plants, which I take care of most. Um, uh, they're going out really cute, uh, good. Uh, I think we planted a uh, carrots. 
So can't wait till they come up because I love parents. And yeah, I don't really have much to say. I don't know who to pass it on next. Benita, do you want to go next? Thank you. Um, enjoying the conversation. <clears throat> uh, I was laughing with <laughs> the uh, Danielle who's talked about all the tomatoes. I too got a little, got a little too many tomatoes, but looking forward to them. Um, so thank you for that little fun note too. And I was thinking what would be helpful for me is if someone like in the email could give us lists of organizations addresses uh, for ways to contribute um, you know I I would so for instance I was thinking well I would love to contribute to the cost of a planter but I'm not crafty enough to build my own planter but I could contribute to one. So all these little groups that I'm not familiar with and email with this group and address and a way to donate would be fabulous for me. And that's really all I have. And I would love to hear from, I, is Kevin still on? I would love to hear from Kevin. Good morning, everybody. You guys can hear me? Yes. Okay, first yes. of all, I just want to say I'm so proud with Danica and Dara created this organization to help out communities and trying to grow the vegetables and fruits, grow and grow myself to make it better, make better for the community. I'm so proud of you guys. So I'm pretty much from city kids. I never grew anything before in my life, but now, thanks to Danica, I got like a lot of plants. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. We got some tomatoes, and some peppers, more tomatoes. We love tomatoes for some reason. And we got some cauliflowers and some onions and more tomatoes. But they all growing pretty good. At first, especially these flowers, they are took forever to grow. But since we've been watering every day and some see the suns, everything looks a lot greener, everything's growing, some onions. So yeah, I'm just happy I can get involved, uh, help the community out and trying to grow, trying to have a green thumb, like you guys say, a green thumb. I think I'm almost there. But other than that, thank you for inviting me. Thanks for all the volunteers to help us out. Delivery on Sundays. Thank you all. That's it. Cass, do you want to go next? Yeah, I'll go next. Um, so I'm Cass Burnett. Uh, uh, I was in the mountains last night, so I had to drive to an area to get cell phone service uh, on top of the mountain. And uh, just want to show you guys my view. I don't know if you guys could see it, but there's the uh, Wind River Mountains over that way. And Forwashki's probably over that way somewhere. Uh, so. Yeah, with the uh, Fort Washakie, the community garden located at the Fort Washakie Powwow Grounds. Um, that's been a lot of fun. And man, I was really thankful to have uh, the extra help with the, the interns um, with helping getting dirt. You know, like it took us 30 minutes to get two loads of dirt, which probably would have maybe, oh, know, maybe a couple hours. <laughs> a couple trips maybe, but yeah, it, we got it done in no time, um, and planting, or not planting, but painting the, the flower beds and the garden boxes, uh, that was a lot of fun too, um, but yeah, I'm just really excited to see what everyone's got growing, um, when they grow, um, there's topsoil there, there's a load of dirt there, 
Um, manure it was fun getting manure too, <laughs> playing in manure. Um, I think the the one thing that I'm really bummed about is, you know, during the, the COVID and having to, you know, with the stay home order on the reservation and um, not being able to go to work, um, but still working from home, but in the downtime, being able to help with for our own um, and volunteer uh, my time to help was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it, but I'll be going back to work. I start, I went back to work Wednesday and half a day Friday. And I think we're going back next week full time. Um, so I'm bummed. <laughs> I'm dumb, bummed if I can quit my job and, you know, make a, make a living off of her our own. And, you know, I would. Um, so I'll still be available weekends and evenings, um, to help out in any way I can. Um, and I really like hearing about the Scarecrow project. That sounds like it, it'd be a lot of fun, especially for the youth. Um, yeah, excited to see, see, um, what comes of that what scarecrows come of that. Um, and I, my little niece came here with me. Uh, I'll let her say hi. Hi. <laughs> and I can't think of anything else to um, talk about. So I'll pass it on. I'll pass it on to... I'm not sure who's talked up there for a little bit and back in uh, Libby Lewis. Did Libby Lewis? Yeah, yeah she uh, went. Maybe LaDon? LaDon? I thought Ladon. I was on mute. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. Um, hello, everybody. Really, really good to see everybody. And you know, the interest in this amazing project. Thank you, as always, Dara and Danica, for, you know, not just imagining it, but really, you know, putting the blood, sweat, and tears into it. Um, so, uh, sorry about I don't have a camera today, and I'm on two different things, phone and um, my uh, desktop. So, uh, the gardening. So, I did do... You know, I think I think I I would not be doing this at all if it were not for Darren. <laughs> I would just like just let the let the garden boxes stay ratty. Um, and so I, I want to thank you for that because I, I'm being socially pressured into it, <laughs> and I think that's a really good thing. And um, so, but I'm also overthinking stuff. And YouTube is a really great thing, and it's also really dangerous. And, you know, too much information. So I, I've got a little bit fixated on um, the Farmer's Almanac. And, oh, my God, I can't do that today because the Farmer's Almanac says I can't. So I had to, you know, I, 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 as I said last time, I didn't plan on the full moon, which I had planned to initially, but found out it's not good to plan on the full moon. And then transplanting, I can't remember what dates those were. So I, I, I transplanted um, the various things that I had already, you know, that have already been sprouted and, um uh, and had watched a previous YouTube video that said what you do that you know that, that is really great for plants is you break up the roots before you put them in. Well, that is true for some plants, <laughs> not tomatoes. So I found out, and so my tomatoes just like went limp really fast, and I was like, holy smoke, what did I do? And so then I went back to the computer, found out that you're not supposed to do that, but you can recover them, you know, they will recover if you, uh, because they're in stress mode. The, um, when you break them up, the roots like that, they can't pick up the water. So even if you have enough water, they'll still wilt. So they advise you to cover them with shade. So yesterday I thought all my tomato plants were dead, 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 or going that way. And I got up this morning because I put shade over them yesterday and went out and talked to them and told them how much I love them and please don't go away. And today they're coming back. So I'm pretty darn excited about that. Um, other than that, 
just trying to stay at it and um, recognize that, you know, it's a learning. It's a, it's a learning curve. So um, thank you very much. And uh, I am going to pass it. Chessie, did you speak? Yeah, Chessie spoke. We have uh, Chrissy, Danelle, and then Anna left. And Sabrina. Okay, Chrissy, have at it. You're on mute. Duh, act like it's my first time, huh? Hi, I'm Chrissy Nardi. I'm over here in Lander. Um, I'm just sitting outside in my garden. I'll flip it around so you guys can check it out. I don't know, it's going pretty good. Dara's been coming over and helping her and Byron. The choke cherries, the wind just took those out again. So I'm going to try to go over there on my crutches and pick them back up. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a whole bunch of giant peppers on this pepper plant. So I'm kind of proud of that. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited for Grow Our Own and everything. I think everybody's doing an amazing job. Dara's a rock star. And yeah, I'll pass it to Danelle. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon. Uh, hello. Um, well, Okay, I just want to say thank you to Dara and Danica for all the work that they put into this. And I know it's a lot of work and it's exhausting and everything like that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to be able to help when I can. <clears throat> just like Cass, Cass mentioned, a lot of us are going to be going back to work full time. And you know, like these past couple of weeks for me, well, a few weeks for me, my hours been picking up. So um, I wasn't quite able to volunteer as much as I was before. But um, um, I did tell Dara that uh, yesterday she asked me to water the garden over there by Walmart and um, I was willing to help them out on Fridays and Saturdays on my days off to water that um, garden over there because I know like they have so much going on and everything like that so um, doing what I can to help Um, <clears throat> then I'm kind of excited about the, the youth and I could just, uh, see Sean and Niall, um, doing what they can for Grow Your Own. And I walked in on them and they said they were thinking about the name, uh, Grow your own juniors. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so they're back there talking about it and making plans and excited, excited to help and get their friends involved and other youth members. Um, yeah, so really looking forward to that. Not looking forward to going back to work full time though. <laughs> and it's tough because I work graveyard. So I'm on a totally different schedule from everybody else. Everybody's awake during the day. I'm, I'm, I'm sleep during the day and I'm up at night. So like if any of you guys try to get a hold of me and you guys can't, it's because I am sleep during the day. And I do got, I do got to work tonight, but, um, my dad had um, 
went out of town and asked me and my brother to um, take care of his animals. So I got to do that before I come home and go to take my nap and uh, cook for my kids and head off to work. But yeah, story of my life. Anyways, I'll pass it on. Thank you. So you said Sabrina's on. Sabrina, are you there? She may have jumped off. All right, uh, Anna, Anna, more. the moment we've been waiting for. And so I am really, I, I, I invited you because I killed, I killed a lot of worms this time. And so I feel really bad. Um, I killed $40 worth of worms and it really, um, it really affected me. And I was like, oh, what did I do wrong? And what I found out, what I did wrong, I was in so much of a rush. I'm like, oh, put them in a dark place. I put them in the closet in, in the tool shed and it was hot in there and I wasn't even thinking. So that's what I did wrong. But so yeah, we would, we would love to hear more and, and we want to grow our own, would like to create our own worm bins and maybe even get others to um, have worm bins. So yeah, so it's all you. Awesome. Awesome. Can you guys hear me and see me? Okay. Looks a little dark, but um, so I'm sitting in my greenhouse. I, I have a little farm just outside of Lander um, and it's not real big acreage. We have less than 30, but we feed over 50 different families around the county with produce coming from our lands and our own family eats food that we've produced 12 months of the year. So I, I, it can be done even in the middle of Wyoming. Um, so right now I'm sitting in a, in a greenhouse, which is, it's more like a cold frame. It's just an old tool shed that I kept knocking walls out and putting in shower doors and windows that I find at garage sales. Um, and it's growing, we got tomatoes. I got three kinds of kales and peppers and nasturtiums. I like those flowers that are edible and you can add to things. I've got carrots growing in here, which is a companion plant for tomatoes that I started early in March and we've been eating carrot greens and pestos and all kinds of different things so and then at one end of this little room I've started some service berry plants um, that I found in the wild and I'm cultivating to go into our just our kind of patch so the kind of gardening that I do um, some people might look at it and say it's kind of like a permaculture or or kind of those food guilds so it's based on a lot of things that are perennial and just come back by themselves because I'm not like a farmer that likes to hoe the lines. I mean, your guys' gardens that you've been showing me today are much more beautiful and organized than what I'm doing. So <laughs> good for you for making beautiful, beautiful plants on your first try for some of you. That's really amazing. I love those, those pots on the porch even. How much food you can make in a cubic foot of soil is just amazing. But what I do is mostly survival of the fittest. It's a Darwin garden. If it wants to grow here, I let it grow here, especially if I can eat it or I can feed it to someone. So that's but well, we have a lot of fruit bearing berries, choke cherries, raspberries, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, lots of apple trees and cherry trees started and um, kind of the herbs, rhubarb, asparagus, horseradish, all those kind of things that just survive by themselves. So what we, what I've learned in gardening and I've been doing it for about 40 years and I'm only 42, so it tells you when I started, um, is in Wyoming, it's a, it's a battle, right? You've got the weather, you've got the short season, you've got, you know, hard to access water. But all those things you can't really control, you know? But the thing you can control is your soil. And I think people overlook it all the time and they wanna put money and they wanna buy potting soil and they wanna, you know, give up because the soil doesn't matter. But if you have good dirt, you can grow good stuff here. You, we have tons of sunshine. If you can get water to it and you can improve your soil, you can grow stuff and that goes for growing hay on the big acreage like for my cows and that goes to growing special you know varieties of peppers in your greenhouses and it, everywhere in between i'm constantly trying to look at my soil types and and think about how i can improve them and it doesn't seem very sexy when you're just looking at dirt but when you get your hands in some good soil that has produced beautiful tomatoes it is just alive it's just it feels good it smells good it's got all kinds of living things in it. And one of the keys to that is worms. It's one of the easiest ways to tell whether your soil is any good is you open it up and if there's things crawling in there, you're like, this is a good place to live. This will support some plant growth. So that's what 
um, that's what kind of got me started on this is I, you know, I did all of those tests like pH and nitrogen and I'm buying all these science kits and I don't want to do that. It's, I don't need another project. I don't need to do that kind of chemistry. I just want to look at it and say, yes, this will grow food or not. So that's how I got into worms. Um, there's a couple kinds of, of worms that when you think about in a whole soil system and the ones I think that Dara wanted me to talk about today are the ones that you compost with. And that is a, that's a science called vermicompost um, or some people call vermiculture if you're trying to grow worms all the time it's called vermiculture but if you're trying to use them to make soil or make compost it's called vermicompost um, and that takes a special kind of worm as Dara knows she bought some <laughs> so um, the kind of worms that you want to compost are called um, epigaic epi means like near or above and gaic is the earth so those worms that kind of are in the top of the soil, not the ones that burrow down deep into your dirt. Those are earthworms or fishing worms. Those are good worms to have too. But if you're trying to compost, you need those, those top level worms. And uh, the most common kind that you can buy are called red wrigglers. But you can also get those just out. If you leave a, like a, a pile of your leaves that you rake, if you leave those in a spot and you keep it wet and you dig down under it, you'll find red wrigglers growing in that spot. You can just collect them. So you don't have to pay again, Dara. You can just go find some in the wild and put them in a bucket and grow them back. Um, so I've got some here. Hopefully you guys can see. They are a little bit red and they are smaller than an earthworm. Like you wouldn't want to go fishing with them because they're too small to keep on a hook it's called red wrigglers. So when I go into my garden and I dig deep in the soil, you know, I can just break apart a big clump of any, any shovel full I take and it will just be full of big, thick earthworms. And they look a little bit different. They're usually more blue or gray in color. They're bigger. They're deeper in the soil. They've dug a little tunnel. There's a big fatty. So they, they are a little different. And like I said, I like those too. That's one of the reasons we Uh oh. I've worked so hard to heal. So we spend a lot of mulching the land, keeping it covered, protecting it, keeping it moist, and the, the earthworms naturally come to it. Okay, so if you want to, if you've collected your red wrigglers and you uh, want to start growing them to, to use in your garden, there's a couple different ways to do it. Some of them are fancy and expensive. And I've never tried those. And some of them are dirt cheap and kind of messy, but you know, that's more my style. So that's what we're working on. Um, and the reason that I do it, I should say, because it is an extra job. It's an extra thing you got to take care of. The only reason I do it is because it makes such valuable output. Like if I was just doing this for a hobby, it would not be worth it. But because I get so many good products from these worms and I see the impact it has on my growing, it's worth me having an extra little, little job to tend to when I come out to the, to the garden. Um, so the things that I get from my worms are the compost. And because I don't want to take care of worms over the winter, I just dump that into my greenhouse. And then in the spring, I take it back out and I, I cultivate it. But the other thing I get from worms is this worm tea. See if I can show you without spilling it there. Goes. So it's this, it really looks like sun tea that you left too long in the window. It's this dark, beautiful brew like kombucha. And it's um, pretty, it's got a little bit of sediment in it, but it's a concentrated fertilizer. So I never buy fertilizer. I never pay money for fertilizer because I've got this beautiful tea and I dilute that a lot. I take maybe a cup and two gallons of water and I d just dump it on the leaves, dump it on the ground and I, and I can keep that going for the whole season that I'm running worms. So those are kind of the two products I get from worms. It's the compost that they make, which I just dump into the garden and kind of pull in and the tea, which is really a valuable fertilizer. Um, like I said, the, the different ways that I set up are kind of low maintenance and you can buy fancy worm composting systems. Um, one of the ways that, that I like to do it is just straight in my garden. Every year I build one little area that's just a trench. It's about a foot by a foot deep, foot wide, and it's just a trench. And I just start adding compost stuff into that trench 
every year I dump my coffee grounds, I dump my eggs, all my composting stuff that I'll talk about in there. I just let it layer up. And then I'm, I don't use that, that, that space at all that year. But the next year, that's a beautiful, rich place for my really um, hungry plants like parsley. Tomatoes usually do well there. Something that's really needs a rich soil I can put there. Or I can leave it there because it's also a nice boundary to keep the weeds out while filling the richness in into my garden bed. The other system that I have is kind of a more formal uh, vermiculture model. And that's a pretty slick little double bucket system. So I take a five gallon bucket and I drill it full of holes. These are just under a half inch holes and some little holes. All the way on all sides, it's got holes and holes in the bottom. And I make sure that bucket sits inside another five gallon bucket like this. So inside this bucket is gonna go my worms and my compost and my tea is gonna be collected in the bucket below. So to set it up for the first time, I take my, my bucket with the holes in it and I take some newspaper and I kind of line that bucket so that the stuff's not gonna fall out of the holes. I just shove newspaper in there and then I start to fill it with the goodies. Usually I start with a handful of good so soil that I got from somewhere else, from the garden or someone else's compost to get me started. Then I have to add a good mix of, of wet and dry things. So like green and brown things, they call it. The green things are biodegradable food that rots easily. And the brown things are drier matter, drier material. If I'm going too fast, you got a question, just holler at me. Um, so I might start with some straw from the barn. Usually I scratch out of the barn what my sheep have had their lambs in. And I put that in the bottom. Some shredded newspaper, cardboard is good, some torn up egg cartons, that kind of dry material. And then I add some of the food, the worm food, which, um, you know, I get scraps from a restaurant in town so that we have a lot of like vegetable scraps. So they love that carrot peels, beet peels, potato peels, that kind of thing. Um, coffee grounds. So if you know somebody who runs a little coffee shop, coffee grounds are really a good, um, biodegradable material that helps balance the pH of it. So I give them a little handful of that. Uh, Eggshells, they seem to like. I do let them dry out maybe for a day and then crush them up just to make them a little break down a little faster for those worms. And then I dump worms in. So they just got a little bit of soil, a little bit of food, a little bit of dry matter, and then I keep it moist. And that's basically that's it. You let that sit. <laughs> so the important things about about letting it sit are, as Darren knows, you can't let it get too hot, you can't let it get too cold, and you can't let it dry out. So if you can have those conditions, um, it does what it needs. And I can ignore it for weeks and come back and it's all nice and composted and done, or I can feed it a little bit every day. Um, some of the things that go, people, that go wrong when you're trying to build the system, if you, if you put in the wrong things, like if you put in meat, it's gonna stink and it's gonna rot and it's gonna mold. You don't want that. Uh, if you put in citrus things, I don't usually put in limes or lemon peels or anything that's really acidic. I don't do very much onions. Anything with a real strong odor has a lot of oils in it or is difficult to break down, I don't put in there. Um, banana peels will go in, but they take a long time to biodegrade, but they're really good composting material. So if I have time, I'll sit here and just like snip it with my knife and then throw it in. Uh, avocado peels, same thing. They take a long time, but they're good compost, so, and they're kind of in the brown side of things, so I add them in there too. Um, it is easy for it to get too hot. I don't keep my worm bin in my greenhouse because it's too hot. And while things are naturally composting and biodegrading on their own, they create their own internal heat. So if you've got it in a hot place, plus you've got the composting heat, the worms get cooked. So I keep it in a shady spot out behind my chicken house where it's easy for me with the hose every once in a while to give them a squirt. Um, and then, so I've let that sit, my worms are going. Uh, you know, if it's real early in the spring, I'm gonna give them a really good start so they, they get to the point where they're healthy and they're laying eggs. And you can kind of dig through the compost and you can see their tiny little, little worm eggs in there. And I, I know that's a good time to start separating and collecting from them. Before that, I don't try and steal from them too much because I'm stealing from their habitat. So once they're starting to reproduce, I can go in, I can collect the tea at any time, I can take some of the compost out, 
sprinkle it around or tuck it in with when I plant a new tomato, I stick some compost down in the bottom um, and I can make use of it like that. Um, what else was I gonna say? Um, another model that I've seen that works in some community gardens is to stick them in a bathtub. So you've got a really big kind of warm bed and you've already got the drain at one end where you put a bucket on and that kind of naturally collects the warm tea, they call that. And it's an easy place for people. When I weed, I take all my weeding stuff and just throw it on top to kind of put a mulch layer on top and keep that cool in the bed. Um, what else? You guys got any questions so far? I, does that make sense? It's not a really complicated science, but it is a, it is a pretty interesting process that goes on. And, and to watch all your scraps be turned into something that's really just gold for your plants is a pretty exciting process for the, amount, the little amount of work that goes into it. So, so it's okay to just keep them in the shade then? Yeah, as long as they're moist, you know, and as long as it's, it's shady. They, direct sun almost never is good for them, um, unless you've got a nice thick layer of mulch on top to keep them cool. Um, but yeah, the, the, your, the soil should be no warmer than what's in your garden, you know? So you should be able to put your hand in it and feel like, okay, this is the same temperature that's in my ground soil. So it should be on the, on the cooler end. Okay, we're gonna attempt, I'm gonna attempt it. And so if I have questions, I can reach out, right? You betcha, anybody. I'm so excited for what you guys are doing and I'm so excited to help. And uh, I, I think this, the idea of using worms is a really important part of doing things naturally because we also have a, a hay farm in Riverton where we do a lot of conventional farming. So we spray poison and we spray fertilizer and we you know, do it's one crop in a huge acre. And it sucks, it is not good for the soul. You can see the, the bugs aren't there, the life isn't there. Those plants are huge, they're almost to my shoulder now, but it feels so inauthentic, it feels so unhealthy. Um, so this is really a good place to start. If you can make the soil work for you, then you don't have to buy all that other crap and put it in there and think about what it's doing to your body and all those things. So yeah, worms are really a good place to get going. If you've got good worms, you've got good soil. Is there a cutoff date for like when it starts getting cold that we can do this? Um, so like I said, I, I kind of run it way into the fall. As long as my greenhouse is growing things, I'm, I'm running worms. And then my greenhouse, I kind of start to shut things down in October when we have hard freezes at night because I don't want to keep covering and uncovering. And I do then move my bucket of worms into the greenhouse then when, it's, when it won't get over 70 in my greenhouse, then I keep my worms inside for another little while. Um, but then I get to a point where I'm ripping everything out of the greenhouse and just putting it to bed for the winter and I just dump my whole worm bucket right into the garden bed. So it is still here, it's still kind of, um, you know, it's, I can still get those worms back in the springtime and they're working in the, over the winter in a, in a safe warm bed in the greenhouse. All right, is there anybody else that has questions before we go? LaDawn, do you have any questions? All right, nobody. All right, so it was good. I'm, I'm glad and happy that I've learned about the worms and hopefully I don't kill any more. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, so. We'll, we'll be in touch with um, everybody for next time. I don't know, we don't have a topic for next Sunday, but we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. We kind of just, you know, go along and run into people and we're like, hey, we want to learn more about this. We want to learn more about that. So we'll see what happens this next time. Awesome. Hey, Sarah, another thing that I would add, if you're trying to mix it up in your garden, another good class would be on chickens. We really appreciate having our chickens around for helping us keep our soil good and, and add into the diversity that's in what, where we grow. So put that on your list of maybe somebody can give a talk about how to. <laughs> and chickens are you good can for talk about chickens next week. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right, yeah, chickens then. We'll do chickens Thanks. next week. Uh, all right, we'll talk to everybody us. later. Thank wait, you all. Sarah, wait, hold on, we have the drawing. Oh, oh yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Ah, oh, she's ready to get out there and work. Oh, my God. <laughs>
I have to remind her, slow down. Okay, so today, uh, we forgot to mention at the beginning, but every day or during every Zoom meeting, we try to have a giveaway for everybody uh, just to keep the community, you know, something to give back. Uh, we did have um, that little tractor thing that uh, Chrissy won the other week. And then we gave a set of um, a shovel, a rake, uh, full size with soil, I think it was like the other weekend, and then the rose bush last Sunday. So today we're going to give a $50 gift card uh, to somebody. I have all the names here. I'm going to draw um, the two sprouts. Um, but before I do that, I just want to say thank you to all. I made a big old list of people I want to thank. Um, I want to thank Kaz, Chrissy, and Danelle for all the work that you guys stepped up and helped Dara with, with going to get soil, to bag it, to, I mean, to, to put it in buckets and deliver it. When we did our um, starter kits, that really helped us a lot. Uh, when, to deliver to a hundred people, that's, you know, while you were there, it was, it's hard. Uh, thank you, Kevin and Byron for stepping in and helping us do that as well. Uh, my brother, Grant, thank you. Um, oh, Elijah, he's, his name's Elijah, he's Elijah, but we call him Grant. And, um, Thank you, Nancy and Nancy, to, to join us so you can get an idea of kind of what we've been doing. We've been doing these meetings for the last month and a half to two months. Um, and thank you for your uh, contributions because that a lot of that wasn't possible without you. Um, Chessie, thank you again for the resources, the guidance, everything that you've done to help uh, Dara and myself uh, to to be better and to to grow with this as we're going along and the volunteers oh my god those are those they they really came in handy at a time when we were just especially Dara where there was not enough hours in the day to get everything done that we needed to get done um, Hank and Livy thank you so much for joining us and reaching out and collaborating everybody appreciates that I just love how like our community. Um, is, is so supportive and there for each other. And if there's anything that we need to do to be more supportive, uh, we're, we're, we're with it. Uh, hands down, we'll, we'll do what we need to do to help too. Um, the Grow Our Own Youth, uh, Sean and Niall, I, it's your summer and you guys coming here and, and doing this with us as children instead of, you know, all this COVID too, but, you know, being that you're young and interested and that, that means a lot. And a special thank you to LaDon. It's always a pleasure to have you join us. And I'm glad you were able to make it in this weekend. And the, uh, I was hoping we were going to talk about some Anasazi beans again today, but we just ran out. But I wanted to thank you too for, for that. Uh, we do thank you for the beans that you donated and we really appreciate it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and draw the name. I'm so sorry. I get so emotional because this is so special to us. And we are planting the beans today, the Anasazi. We got big buckets. We're finally planting them. And I want to give a big shout out to the funders, uh, Riverton Peace Mission, Wyoming Interfaith Network, Wyoming Community Foundation, United, United Presbyterian Church, and then Celeste, um, who is from, I believe she was from uh, Nebraska. And so she was the very first funder that started on the GoFundMe. And so she's a big follower as well. So big shout outs to everyone. And thank you all. And none of this would have been possible without any of them people. So with that said, Danica, who is the winner? Hank? <laughs> Hank, so Hank is the winner of the $50 Sprouts card. And Danica, you will deliver that? I can uh, pick it up today since we're getting soil, and then I work in Ethity anyway, so I can, he stays in Fort, so I can, I need to go to Heinz and get some Piccadilly anyway, so I can take it to him tomorrow. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. I never win any drawings or anything like that. This is the first time, so I am overjoyed, and I want to express my gratitude. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you. Have a good Safe week. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.